Welcome to church. If you're watching online or you're here, I'm Pastor Stephen. <clears throat> Let's turn into our Bibles to 2 Corinthians. You'll find this located immediately after 1 Corinthians <laughs> chapter 10. That one's between 9 and 11 for you guys out there. It's 2 Corinthians 10. When you get there, stand up with me. We're going to read six verses of Scripture and we're going to dwell on them today for the Lord to move in them. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. I, Paul, myself, entreat you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, I who am humble when face to face with you, but bold towards you when I am away, I beg of you that when I am present, I may not have to show boldness with such confidence as I count on showing against some who, sp who suspect us of walking according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. We thank you for your word today, God. Lord, we come not leaving, hopefully, with just a memorization of Scripture or a warm, fuzzy feeling. But we come expectant that you would move and work in our hearts and in our minds, that you would work in our church, that you would create in our hearts love and unity and peace and grace, that you would give us orders and assignments in our homes and our workplaces and in our city. Lord, teach us how to fight. And Lord, give us the authority, the confidence, and the eyes to see strongholds and the dominion to pull them down. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You be seated. <clears throat> I really don't remember. <laughs> I wrote this. I wrote the, my notes on all throughout the week, starting on Monday. And uh, I don't really remember being... Is this, it's been a while since I feel like I've been this excited to preach about something. It's not normally because I feel like i got a lot of good things to say about it. I think it's just when I can feel that it's a word that's most needed for our church is when I get really excited about it. And uh, not because I've seen with my eyes that you need what I'm going to say, but that I can feel in my heart that we need what I'm going to say today. And um, I also can't really remember a time when I've had a week better than the week that I just had. I really just had a tremendous week. And it was because on Monday morning, it was one, another one of those Monday morning words that, that I'm always grateful for the Lord to give me. On Monday morning, actually it was about Monday at 11 o'clock, the Lord really spoke to me about what we're going to talk about today. And it just blessed my week. And I just uh, knew I had to bring it today so that it would bless, bless you as it's blessing me. And so um, today... We're going to talk about strongholds. And actually, I hope we're going to do a little more than talk about them. I hope we're going to pull them down. Yeah. Um, but we've got to know what they are before we know what to grab. Um, a stronghold, it sounds kind of like a spiritual wor word, not one that maybe you would use on a regular basis. Hey, guys, come over. We're going to build a stronghold. You know, It's not, not something that we would use in our common language all the time. But I want to give you just the literal definition just kind of rethink of what this is as a, as a spiritual word today. The literal definition of a stronghold is a place that has been fortified so as to protect it against attack. Okay? It's a fortified place. It's big, thick, giant walls surrounding something as if to protect something or someone from, from anything being able to penetrate through it. Okay, that's what a stronghold is. I thought a stronghold was like when some, like the way that Adam's dad used to shake my hand when we were kids. That was a stronghold, man. <laughs> take, take you to your knees, right? 
This is a little different. This is a this is a a, a fortified uh, wall or surrounding or fortress that would keep anything that wasn't supposed to be in out. That's what a stronghold is. Okay, that's the literal definition. Now, spiritually, we know that there's a strong there are strongholds spiritually, and I think if we're naive, we might just think of a stronghold as a sin. But it, not all sin are strongholds. It's a little deeper than that. See, strongholds have been built up over time, and now they effectively keep truth out. Remember, it's a defensive maneuver, the way a stronghold is. It's not just a weakness or a temptation. It's a built-up place of mind, okay? Causing anything that's supposed to be in to stay out. Now, give you a modern day term for a stronghold because we don't say the word stronghold as often as we probably should. We have our own modernized words that are a little, a little more easier to digest. Uh, a modern day word for a stronghold is an insecurity. Okay? An insecurity is a modern day term for a stronghold. It's a place in my mind that has been fortified, built up, with thick walls to protect against attack. You understand? And when I say attack, I don't mean derogatory. I mean it, it protects against truth coming in. It's a place of mind that is so built up with lies that the truth cannot possibly penetrate through. Okay, someone looks at you after service and say, you just look so beautiful today. You may even let it slip out of your mouth. No, I don't. But even if you don't, in the mind, you're already shaking your head mentally, even as they're saying it, because it's a fortified place, and that compliment won't break through. Yeah. Someone says, you did a really awesome job on this. Just shake your head. You're such a great father. You're so good at your job. And you can feel it. It doesn't penetrate. It won't make it through because there's a stronghold that's been created that keeps the truth out. Okay? You know, it, 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 you know, these sort of people, they think everyone around them is just a liar normally. They think everyone that's always complimenting them, they're, they've all conspired against them. Fifty or so people all got together. And they said, let's lie to them about their talents and abilities and their good looks. <laughs> right? That's literally because there's a stronghold, you can't penetrate through it. You know? And, um, and so we would call that in a modern day, we, we would call that uh, insecurity, but really... Spiritually, it's a stronghold. And, and people can, and you, you can feel it when you're around people that have strongholds because you feel the need to always want to pour truth into them. But you can almost see it in the spiritual as it comes off of your lips. It just ricochets out of their mind. Right? And sometimes you can actually physically see it. Like, you know, you did so good today. And even as you're just starting to finish that sentence, they're going. No, no. No, like you, I'm not, I'm not a liar. No, you really did good today. It's a, you see it physically manifest as strongholds sometimes. And, and so, because, and, and honestly, sometimes this disguises itself as humility, but it's not humility to not be able to receive a compliment. Yeah. It's, a re, it's a rejection of truth. It's a stronghold that rejects truth. And, and so, um, strongholds have been formed to keep you believing lies because they continuously reject or protect you from the truth. You understand what I'm saying? It's a protection device. Not, not put there by God, but put there by the enemy. It's something he can set up in your mind and leave and not have to worry about anything getting through there. It's big, thick walls. I'll build up in them such an insecurity, such a stronghold, that I won't even have to look their way for the next five years. Nothing's breaking through that. It doesn't matter how many church services they go to. It doesn't matter how many people encourage them. It's just going to bounce right off, ricochet right off, because of the strongholds that are placed there. It's a defensive structure. Paul says, you think we're walking according to the flesh, but we're not. We're walking according to the Spirit and we're tearing down strongholds. We're tearing down wrong thinking. We're not letting lies collect momentum 
in our minds. But he writes to them and he says, but you are. See, give you a little context of what had happened in this, this, this church at Corinth. Now, Corinth was an incredibly gifted church. Um, naturally, they were gifted, but also spiritually they were gifted. There was a, it was a church filled with miracles and, 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 and Holy Spirit activation. But they just had, they had difficulty. Sometimes the, even a gifted church has difficulty, right? And they had difficulty. And one of their difficulties was they would, they would allow strongholds to be formed in their mind. And so one of the strongholds, we can kind of read between the lines and say, one of the strongholds was because Paul was so loving and gentle to them in person. Yet, yet because his, le- his first letter was so bold to them that it had created a mindset in the church at Corinth that Paul was all lip service. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, Paul, you were all nice to us when you were here in person, but man, your letters sure are stern. Let's see if you'll be that stern with us in person. It created a, a, a division against them, right? The enemy had put it there. And so Paul says, uh, you think I'm walking according to the flesh? I'm not. I'm waging war. Okay, I'm waging war, uh, not against the flesh, but against the spiritual realm and against strongholds. And uh, he says, but you are, you've let Satan divide you against me. So you better tear down those strongholds that you've let Satan build or else I'll, I myself will tear them down when I get there. I like that. Yeah. I like that a whole lot. 10.6, 10, he says, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Tear down the strongholds or I will. That's what he wrote them. For real. You think I'm so meek and gentle? He said, I hope I get to be meek and gentle when I come up in there. <laughs> but if I come up in there and you've got all this wrong thinking, I'm going to tear down every one of those lies. That's what he said. That's a good brother in Christ, a good sister in Christ. Let me tell you what. Go ahead and look at your neighbor. Look at him and say, tear down your strongholds. Tear down your strongholds. Or else I will. Or else I will. That's a brother right there saying, hey, say, you don't let all those lies get festered up in you, but if I start to see it, I'll tear them down for you. That's harsh. It's hard to look at somebody, I I mean, hard for a lot of people, I think I do it on an everyday basis, to look at people and go, you know, you're believing a lot of lies. You know, that's hard. It's hard, but it's real. You you have to tell it to people because they don't know. Because just because they're lies doesn't mean they're not producing real feelings. And it's hard because you, you, you balance dealing with this real feeling, but understanding that it's a, it's a totally fictional situation in their mind. It's a stronghold that's been placed there by the enemy and that's producing real feelings. But it's, if we could tear down the stronghold, then the feelings would cease as well. You know what I mean? And, and so that, that's what we're really supposed to be doing here with one another. Is yeah, 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 you know, Pastor Stephen's all gentle and kind and nice and whatnot. But if you walk up in here in your strongholds, I'm going to tear them down. But that's, that's supposed to be, that should be said of all of us. Ralph's a good guy. But man, he doesn't let his friends roll around bound up in lies and bondage. He'll, he'll call them out. Yes. That's how we're supposed to be. And, and that's why he wrote them. And he goes, ah, yeah, I was pretty nice last time. I, I hope I get to be that nice next time. But, but the way it sounds, I think I'm going to have to say some things. <laughs> but I'm going to give you a chance to pull them down yourself, is what he said. And that's really what I came here today to do today. <laughs> this is your chance <laughs> to pull them down yourself. That's what he says. He goes, you need to destroy these strongholds. Why did he tell them to do that? Because they had the authority and the dominion to do so. He said, I don't have to come and tear them down. But if you don't, I will. Yeah. Right? And so because within, within us, we, we've been given a spirit of sound mind and of dominion and of authority. I should be able to call out when there's been a wrong thought pattern existing in my own mind and put it to rest yeah, yeah. before another believer has to. But the church is supposed to be a place where we just don't tolerate that. Okay? And, and so, I, uh, he, he said to them, I, I'm not walking according to the flesh. You are. To walk according to the flesh is to have no control over what you think about. That's really a great definition of walking according to the flesh. Because there may be things that are produced or manifested through that. But every sin and every wrongdoing starts at a wrong thought. And it materializes into a wrong thing or a wrong word spoken. But it begins at the thought level. And so to walk according to, he says, that's funny you say that about me in the flesh because really you're walking in the flesh. Because you have no control of your mind. And I do, is what he said. And so 
I really believe that in this room, in a room of this size, I would probably say that almost everyone here has at least one stronghold operating in their mind at this very moment, if not 20 or 30 or 100 and, and in one mind. Seriously, because they get, they get fortified and they get built up. And they start at a young age. And if you're not walking in freedom with Christ, they don't expire. You know, I wish the enemy would set these things up and after five years they just fell away, but no. They just get built up and eventually it's just, your mind is just a big wall all around every detail, every aspect of your life, unless you tear them down. And, um, you know, Paul said, you've let strongholds come and turn you against me and now you're ready to fight. Because they were. We, they were trying to pick a fight with him. He said, but your fight is not against me. Your fight is in between your own ears. You know? I, I, I've been doing this for a long time, and I still forget that sometimes. I still forget that the, the battlefield exists in my mind. That that is the playground of the devil. That that is where he wants to consume us. That is where he sets up strongholds. There are other ways in which he will try to attack us, but they're so, they're so ineffective compared to to setting up strongholds in our mind. Because like I said, he could set up a stronghold in your mind and not even have to fool with you ever again, honestly. You know, he has a limited amount of resources. There's no reason for why we believe that, well, number one, we know that Satan is not omnipresent as God is. So he can't be everywhere all at once. And then we know he has a select number of minions that he's, are at his disposal. And so for someone to actually be tormenting you uh, of the enemy, it's a great honor. <laughs> Because he had to put someone on your assignment or you crossed over a threshold where you ought not be and you're in his kingdom and now you're feeling an attack from it. But listen, because of that, Satan is a wise man. He really is. Because of that, Lucifer instead sends out. We're, we're there. That's, we're there today. Okay. <laughs> Lucifer, this isn't in the notes. Lucifer sends out his demons to go and create strongholds in your mind, because once the stronghold has been made in your mind, he can leave you alone. It's genius. You know, and a lot of times you start to feel like, oh, the devil's at me again. The devil don't have time to be at you again. But he set up a stronghold in you 12 years ago that has tormented you every day since. That's what it boils down to, is the setting up of strongholds. And, 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 but the thing of it is, is that the word says we have authority to destroy them. And pull them down. They're like wasp nest. You know what I mean? How they get built up and it becomes a home for a lie to live. But don't you have the ability to knock it down? And, and so, you know, there, there is truly power to set us free from every single stronghold in Jesus. But he only sets us free from what we want to be set free from. And many of the times we don't even realize the strongholds that exist in our own lives. So we never seek freedom from it. I mean, half the time, people think it's a part of their personality. You know? I mean, the war, if the war is here, the greatest thing that the enemy could ever do is come undercover, sneak into the places of our mind, and encamp there are camouflaged enough that we begin to think that the bad thought patterns are actually just a part of my personality. And that's a stronghold. You know, or even better yet, this is one that he's been sneaking into the church's mind for years, is that, that these places of... of um, these fortified places in our minds are actually spiritual discernment. He can encamp and camouflage so well. It says he masquerades around as an angel of light. He knows the language. He can set up shop in your mind so much that everything he says, you, you consider it being wise and spiritual. Right? I'll give you an example of that. If you feel like you always have a special intuition about you that causes you to steer clear of certain relationships with God's people, if you feel like you've got that supernatural gift to sniff out the good Christians from the bad ones, that's not discernment. That's a stronghold of division that lives in your mind. Okay, I can't tell you the Christians I've been around that feel as though I'm just gifted to know a good Christian from a bad Christian. Well, last time I read the Bible, Jesus knew how to do that too, and he dined with Judas just the same as Peter. So don't you tell me about your spirituality. Okay, because if I can sniff it out, that just means I've got to love them even more. Okay, but the enemy encamps in our mind and makes it, makes it think that it's okay. 
And I don't get a good feeling about them. Okay. Maybe that's because you're supposed to be in a relationship with them. I mean, are they a part of the body of Christ? Yes, they are. Well, then am I supposed to be in a relationship with them? Yes, I am. Now, there'll be different degrees and different levels of relationships, clearly. But you can't have a wrong thought about them. That's a strong one. And that's exactly what the Corinthians had done. They had felt like, we don't know about this Paul guy. I mean, sure, he's planted like 50,000 churches, the greatest apostle ever. He's getting beat on our half every day. But I don't know about him. Boy's kind of gentle in person. Kind of loud in the letters. I don't know about him. Right? Somebody, somebody real wise thought, I don't know, I've just been reading over this letter again. And you know where he said, you know, this stuff about love and how, you know, if we don't love, you know, we're like just a bunch of noise. I don't like all that. I don't know. But, you know, and, and they just, they just started to create that stronghold in their minds against him. Which is genius by the enemy, of course. If you ever get the honor to be in ministry, you'll get to watch a lot of people's minds form strongholds against you. Because when you are a place of when you are in a place of influence, the enemy can't change me standing in front of you speaking truth. But if he puts a stronghold in your mind, then the truth that I speak will never break through. And so very often at the time that stronghold gets formed and it actually becomes a questioning of me and my integrity. And it's okay. Just like Paul said, it's okay. You tear it down or I will. <laughs> you know? That 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 that's what it boils down to. And so, you know, I, I want to talk about today how to identify a stronghold. And it's not that hard, but it's, it blew my mind this week. When the Lord told me this, I was driving in my truck on Monday, and my jaw, I think my jaw, at least my spiritual jaw, but maybe my natural jaw, just about hit the floor. Because as he showed me this simple fact about strongholds, it made me realize how many of them I was allowing to exist in my mind. And I began to just tear them down. And that's why I had the best week I ever. Because I didn't realize how many thick, fortified places that I had allowed to entertain in my mind. This doesn't mean that you're demonic or evil, church. This means that you're human and that you're honored, you're honored and valuable to God. And so the enemy has come against you and put strongholds in your mind. And it's your responsibility not to feel bad, but to just tear them down. And so when the Lord showed me this in my truck this week, I just started pulling them down one at a time, one at a time. And it just, it was, it was the most amazing thing. So I want to tell you how the Lord told me to identify where a stronghold is. A stronghold is a place in your mind where you have great difficulty controlling your imagination. A stronghold is a place in your mind where you have great difficulty controlling your imagination. Okay? When the Lord told me that driving down the road, it, it just hit me because I thought, wow, if I, if this spot, I'll give you some examples of this, but there, you, you, you may even begin to think about some own, your own strongholds in your mind. Those places in your mind that your imagination seems to always run the wildest in, those are the places where there's been a fortified fortress set up, okay, in your mind. It's that place. That's where a stronghold is. It's that place where your imagination runs the wildest. You know, it could be, you could have a stronghold in your health. The enemy set up something in your mind about your health. You know, so every time you stub your toe, you think they're going to have to amputate it. You know, you know people like that. Every time they have a sniffle, they're running to the ER. And you go, well, they're a hypochondriac. They have a stronghold in their mind. It's been set up and it's been fortified and they never get anything done with their life anymore because they're too busy being sick all the time. And the, and the enemy don't mess with them anymore. Why? Because he messed with them 16 years ago with that bad report at the doctor and ain't laid a hand on them since. They keep themselves busy nowadays. That's how strongholds work. You can have a, a stronghold set up in your mind. You can have a stronghold set up in your finances. The moment that your paycheck is shorter, it looks like it's going to be short or an unexpected bill arises, you've already evicted yourself mentally from your home. Okay, because this is the place where your imagination runs the wildest. You know what I mean? This is the place, this is what you're thinking about when you lay down at night and you drift off into, well, I wonder if any, if any of my friends would let, let us live with them if we lose the house. <laughs> you, know, it, you know, you just start to run. It's like you have no control over your mind in this place. That shows us that there's a stronghold set up there. You know, it can be 
uh, there, you can have a stronghold of irrational fear. You know, and you know how you get that? You just watch the five o'clock news. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, the five o'clock news is just produces irrational fear. You know, if you don't get at least uh, three hours of natural sunlight a day, you're going to shorten your life by 27 years. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I got to get in the sun. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm going to die. You know, and it's a stronghold in your mind because you start, even though you've been living without doing this thing your whole entire life, all of a sudden it settles on you. Like, what am I going to do? It's the irrational fear, you know. And, uh, and I could go on. I'm just, I'm just so crazy on the surface. You guys are filling the blanks on some of these. But, you know, people have all sorts of irrational fears about things. You know, it's a, it's a stronghold in your mind. It can be a stronghold of paranoia. Okay, a stronghold of paranoia. Every time, you know, I never identified what it was until I was, until I was in this this week, and I realized that growing up, my dad had a stronghold of paranoia. Everybody was always, everybody was always against him, but nobody really was. It's a stronghold of paranoia. Every time someone looks at you sideways, they don't like you. Or every time something's missing, somebody stole it. They ripped it right out of my dang hands. Every time my bank account's funny, the banker miscounted my deposit. I'm just, you know, it's just this, it's just this stronghold of paranoia. And you know what? You're pretty good at it too because think about it. If you feel like every time something goes missing, somebody stole it from you, well, guess what? This is a place where your imagination runs wild. So not only do you think that they took it, but you also got a pretty good idea of who did it. Because your imagination is wild in this place. I know who did it. I know why they did it. I know when they did it. Because you have this stronghold of paranoia. You know? And, 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 they, you know, and people that have that stronghold, and don't start, well, I was going to say don't be judgmental, but you know, don't be judgmental, but all at the same time, I think it would be actually pretty cool of us to look at each other and go, you know, that's just a stronghold of paranoia. <laughs> Boy, that's honest. That's honest. Right? You know, who... who who, who ate the last, who ate the last cheeseburger, you know? Who, who, who? <laughs> you know, this is the, that was rude. People are, with stronghold of paranoia forget that they take the last bite of something. You know, they think somebody just stole another hand. I mean, you, you, um, you see these strongholds existing in people. And, you know, we can't judge somebody else because of their strongholds because you got your own. Yeah. But we can help each other tear them down. Exactly. But we each got our own. And, w- and one of these might be funny to you. You know, to the person who's always running to the ER, they think it's ridiculous that, um, you know, you think people steal things from you. But their whole life has been stolen away from them because they can't get out of the ER. You know what I mean? They got this spot on the back of their ear that won't go away. Mm-hmm. You know? And they, they're losing their, their hair, man. You know, all this other stuff. It's just, it's just a different stronghold. The enemy sets up strongholds in places where they'll work. Yeah. Okay. You know, you could have a stronghold in a relationship or in many relationships. You know, every time they don't text you back, they don't like you anymore. Right? They left me on red. They don't like me anymore. Has that ever really happened? Yes. Has yes. It? <laughs> Definitely. It has happened. Strongholds in That's the front. That's where the stronghold came from. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Listen, but, but we, we start to feel as though that, that, that our relationships are extra fragile because there's a stronghold there. You know, any time that they go to hang out with someone else, you feel betrayed. Right? There, there's, that's a stronghold. People got to hang out with other people. It's okay. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that they went through their mind and thought, I could hang out with them, but I really like this person way better. <laughs> let's, let's hang out with them instead. But that's a, but that's a stronghold. Matter of fact, they may, they may like you so much more than they like this person, but they're being obedient to Holy Spirit to sow into this person that they can't stand because, because the Lord has laid it on their heart. Because the Lord has laid it on their heart to do so. Did I get too real just then? I'm sorry. None of you. Some of y'all have been like, well, which one is it when he hangs out with me? You never know. Adam. <laughs> no, I mean, but that's a stronghold. If every time someone hangs out with somebody else, you feel betrayed. That's a stronghold. It's a relational stronghold uh, in, that, in that relationship. 
you know, every time they don't text you back, every time they go do something else, every time they, you know, they, they go to a movie and you like kind of like that movie, but they didn't invite you to go. You know, oh my gosh, I can't believe that. You know, you can have strongholds in your relationships as in, in your marriages. Every time your spouse, you know, doesn't quickly compliment your attire, you know, well, they no longer have interest in me. They, they no longer find me attractive. Right? It's a stronghold. They go, well, hang on a second. I had something in my eye when you walked in the room. <laughs> I didn't even see. I couldn't see <laughs> what you had on at the moment. You know? I almost said something, but I didn't. I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> there are some little people in the room. <laughs> I held back. Um, it was right there. You guys have really enjoyed it, but I'm glad I held it in. See me afterwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want me. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> Listen, you can have a stronghold in your relationships. I'm, I'm operating a lot of self control. I'm not going down that road just now, just so y'all know. Y'all just appreciate it. Um, but. You know, you can have, there's all these sort of, and I could, like, I could talk, I really could do a six-week series about strongholds, because there's so many that are, you know, this kind of stronghold, this kind of stronghold, this kind of stronghold. And it's not as though you have to, you know, necessarily identify uh, the, the stronghold by its name. This isn't in scripture, that these sort of things. It's just these encamped places in our minds. You can have a stronghold in your occupation, or in your work, or in your, you know, and it's, it's a thought pattern that you have no control over, you know, or limited control over. You know, it's the place where your imagination runs the wildest. Paul said that this was a carnal or a worldly way of thinking. And it is. You know, Satan, Satan is overtaking the whole world, one stronghold at a time. You know, and, and because once he's built up enough lives in a person, once he's built up enough lives, he can just move on. He doesn't have to worry about the truth penetrating. And he just moves on to the next person. Right? You know, and some are small, like causing people to stay at home from church because no one likes them there anyway. That's, a, that's actually a small one. A big one is, oh, I must be gay because the people of the opposite sex don't like me anyway. That's another stronghold. And, and, and it's just, you know, but it's a place of mind. The, the ladder is a little bit bigger because it totally changes your identity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Based off something that you see with your eyes. And so today, what we need to do together is we need to take dominion back over our imagination. In Jesus' name. And so there's four, there's four ways to tear down a stronghold. And I'm going to go through them. They're really not fancy. And so I can go through them pretty quick. The first way to tear down a stronghold is to bring it to light. It was made in darkness, and it can't survive in the light. Okay? Now, I believe that first means, when you think about bringing it to the light, you think about a public confession. Uh, and, and I think it can get there. But I think when I say light, it first means bringing it to your own light, admitting it, to yourself, addressing it with the Lord, you're, you're, you're actually admitting that, that this is a stronghold that's been encamped in my mind, okay? And then if you can find someone you can confide in and tell them, I think that that brings it completely to the light, okay? James 5.16 says, make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together whole and healed. You know, and if you think that this is just a sermon and we don't live it, our, we had a worship practice Tuesday night. We got here at 5.45. We didn't, we didn't start playing our instruments until after 9 o'clock because we start our worship practice off with prayer. <laughs> normally about a 10-minute portion. But we got together and we were sitting. And there were just strongholds, places that were encamped in our minds. And, 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 and the four of us that were there, we were all just sort of swapping around things. And, you know, one of the things I said was, I was like, you know, I hate worship practice. I said, I can't stand it. I said, I go home every night. And I, just, I just think, how can I quit this team? Really? And, 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 they, and they were, Sean was sharing some things. Ralph was sharing some things. And it was just these fortified places in our minds that really had made it to where we really didn't enjoy even being on the worship team anymore. And so for like three hours, we just <laughs> pull. That's a stronghold. <laughs> we just pulled down a stronghold. You know, this person would talk a little bit, and we'd like pull that down. This person would talk a little bit, pull that down. I'd talk a little bit, pull that down. Lauren talked a little bit, pull that. And we were just pulling down strongholds. And you know, 
and, and we got to the end of it. We really, we have no time to worship our, I mean, to, to practice our set today at all. And I was like, it's okay though. I would rather us have an un, unrehearsed set and to be free from all these strongholds that, you know, that, than to have a great set and to be all bound up in our minds. And so listen, strongholds are embarrassing. It's the last thing you want to do is bring it to the light. The last thing you want to do. But when you do it, man, it's like spraying wasp spray on a nest. I mean, it just, it, it just ruins it. It just totally ruins it. And, and so, you know, the first thing, if you want to really tear down a stronghold, you need to bring it to light. You need to admit it to your own self, address it, pull it out of your own mind, identify that this is a pattern of lies that I have believed for so long, and that this is a place where my imagination consistently runs wild. Okay, and then you go, and then you go to someone, and we're gonna give a chance to do that at the end of our service today. But you go to someone and you say, "Hey, this has been a stronghold in my mind for too long." And then, as you're confessing that sin, there you, it says, "Pray over each other that you may be healed." Okay, and it brings it to the light. The second thing that you have to do to tear down a stronghold is you have to ask God to renew your mind. <laughs> Having a stronghold means you know Romans 12 too. Having a stronghold means that my mind has literally been conformed to the pattern of this world. The world operates in nothing but strongholds, okay? Because they're just set up and fortified, and that's why when you're trying to, sometimes trying to explain to someone what your life is, or how you live your life, or try to explain to, to someone the gospel, they just literally can't get it. They just don't understand the choices that you're making. It, like you can just, it's almost a glazed over look in their eyes. Is because this, there, there's a pattern of this world that exists in the strongholds. And you're, you're saying, we're doing this because of this, this, and this. And you just see it. They go, they don't understand. They don't get it because there's strongholds in their minds. You know, strongholds about who God is. It's a big stronghold. Strongholds about, strongholds about church. I can't tell you how many people. The enemy loves that. One, one thing goes bad at a church. Why? Because it's a church full of imperfect people. You know, or, or even something doesn't go bad. Something just, something just is perceived bad and it builds a stronghold. There's, there's probably, you know, I don't even know, millions of Christians sitting at home today because I can be a Christian and I don't have to go to church. Well, okay. That's not in the Bible. You made that up. It goes against like 15 different scriptures just off the top of my head. Do you read your Bible? Well, I don't have to read my Bible to be a Christian. What do you have to do to be a Christian, Chad? Because <laughs> all I hear out of you is strongholds, you know? But it's because it's these fortified places. And then people say, you should go to church sometime. Go, I don't really church going type, but I believe in God. Oh, so the enemy set up a stronghold in your mind that doesn't allow you to surround yourself with community anymore. You know? I mean, and it's, it's real. And I'm not saying we'd be insensitive about it, but it's real that, that we have these strongholds that exist in us. And so that's the pattern of this world. I need my mind renewed. Okay? I need it renewed. I need to ask God to come and make my mind spiritually new again. I have second thing is I have to ask God to renew my mind. God, change the way I'm thinking. I admit and I confess that this has been wrong thinking on my part. And I don't want to do it anymore. I'm repenting. I'm asking God to renew my mind. The third thing is you have to speak truth into it. Speak truth into the place where the stronghold was existing, okay? It, it, the word says you'll know the truth and it will set you free, okay? So if it's a stronghold of, you know, financial, it's a financial stronghold, you need to find you some scriptures about God's promises of provision and you need to literally build up a new stronghold in that place, a, a godly stronghold, a, a, a place where I'm, does that make sense? I'm putting up new walls there where no matter now what the enemy says, I know God's still going to provide because he's Jehovah Jireh. I'm putting up strongholds in my health where I don't care what the doctor says anymore. I'm going to live in the land of the living. Okay? I'm going to dwell in truth in the places where I've been believing lies for so long. I don't care if my discernment goes off every five minutes and I feel like everybody's against me. I'm going to, I'm going to remember that John 13, 35 says, By my love for one another, I show the world that I belong to Christ. So I don't care if I think they're right or they're wrong. I'm just going to love and mess out of them. Okay, you have to sow truth into the place where you've been believing lies for so long. You know, that's why the most common phrase in all of scripture is, do not fear. Because that's a stronghold, major stronghold of fear. Almost every stronghold is attached to fear. Right, whether it's financial or health or relationship. You see, they're all related to fear, really. But the Lord said, do not fear. Why? Because he knew that this would be the enemy's tactic to set up places of fear in our mind that cause us to operate out of them. 
So the fourth thing is you have to discipline your mind. The very reason that there was a stronghold in you to begin with was because it was an undisciplined place of your mind. Okay? He wrote, he wrote to the church at Corinth and he says, you need to learn to start taking your thoughts captive. Okay? You need to start disciplining your mind because what you tore down, the enemy will want to rebuild. Okay? And so when you have a... And you're going to be especially attacked in the way of whatever you just tore down, if it was a financial stronghold, if it was a health stronghold, if it was a relationship stronghold, you know, whatever it was, you can absolutely believe that all of the, all of the little quadrants of the enemies and all of his minions, and they've got a whole, you know, somebody's pager starts going off in hell, and, you know, it's like, hey, 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 we got a code six, man. They just pulled this thing down. Let's rebuild this thing quick, right? Because, gosh, if they get loose and they get free, what are they going to do? Let's put something back in there fast. And so you need to know that that's coming and discipline your mind as those thoughts start to come back again. Go, no, nah, that's, that's not truth. I'm not going to believe it. Because the stronghold is just created by believing one lie at a time until it's just a big aneba of lies in your mind where truth can't break through. And so those are the four ways the Lord revealed to me of how to tear down a stronghold. First, bring it to light. Two, ask God to renew your mind. Three, speak truth into it. And four, is to discipline your mind. But before we leave today, I wanted to get our prayer, just our prayer team on the sides up here. And um, I want us to sing that song that we sung at the end. I chose that song for this message. Something has to break. And I want us to just sing that song together. And, I, and as we stand and we start to sing these words, I just want you to think in your mind of where is it in my mind? that I have the most difficulty controlling my imagination? Is it my marriage? Is it my children? Is it my finances? Is it the church? Is it relationships? Is it my workplace? Is it God? Do I have a stronghold where I don't truly believe that God is good all the time? Wherever that is, that place where you have the most difficulty controlling your imagination, I think the first thing that we should do as we're just singing this song is just let that come to light in your own mind. And then if you feel led to, to come up here and confess it to someone on the prayer team and just let them pray over you and together pull that stronghold down. I think you'll experience the freedom that I felt in my, in my Todd's pickup truck on Monday driving down the road going, oh my gosh, I can't believe I've been existing with all these fortified walls in my mind about this person and about this thing and about the church and about all this. And I just pulled them all down. And it totally changed my mind. First night, Monday night, I felt like I actually had sleep for the first time in a long time. I just laid there and my mind had nothing to think about. I was asleep in like 10 minutes. I thought, oh, I guess this is the portion where I dwell on my strongholds for an hour. I couldn't even believe the rest that I had. And so I want I the prayer team to come up here. Lord, I just thank you today for your people. I thank you, Lord, that, that you are a God that died on the cross to set us free. To set us free from strongholds. To set us free from what the enemy attempts for evil. Lord, I thank you that you've given us dominion and authority to call it out and bring it to the light. And that it flees. Lord, I just pray that as we're singing together, Something has to break. That all of these strongholds that have existed in our minds for so long, I pray that they'd be shattered in Jesus' name. And that we would be free indeed. Your word says, who the Son sets free is free indeed. And Lord, even as we may feel even led to come forward and say, I've been believing a lie about this for so long. Would you just partner with me? Can we just pull this thing down together? And when two or more agreeing on something, Lord, I know this thing's going to be done. And minds are going to be healed today. Lord, I just pray, would you move? In Jesus' name, Lord, thank you.